Well, hey there, everyone. Pastor John and Cece here with New Anthem Church. And oh my goodness, there's so many amazing things going on in the life of our church. If you didn't know, we're only 13 weeks old and we've already seen over 150 people say yes to Jesus in our church. Yeah, and 27 of those have been in our middle school and high school ministry, Anthem Youth. 27 middle school and high schoolers have said yes to Jesus. That's incredible. You know, we've actually seen over 200 people, we average 200 people that tune in to our live stream on any given Sunday to hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and we also have 50 amazing people that serve every single week and make church happen. They're an incredible bunch of people. They We call them our dream team. The dream team is a member of our church that invests of their time, their talents, and their treasures. It's amazing uh, how much they serve and how much they sacrifice, but we know this, that a movement can't really get going until there's more than just a few people that are giving up their time and their talents and their treasures. So we want to tell you about an opportunity. In our year-end season, our year-end giving, we're going to be doing and introducing an annual offering that we're calling our Legacy Offering. This is an opportunity for every single one of us to dig deep, go above and beyond, to really reach and give radically and boldly in faith, believing that God wants to do some amazing things. So here's what we'd love for you to do now. We'd love for you to head to our website mynewanthem.church slash legacy and at that link you'll find the ways that we're investing this legacy offering which includes the youth in our community our children's ministry it includes investing back into our community through outreach and it includes putting money toward other church plants in metro detroit we're super excited about that friends we truly believe that god's best days are ahead of us and we all have an opportunity to be a part of it to invest in it so the second thing we would love for you to do is to just simply talk to God and pray this prayer. God, is there any way that I'm supposed to be a part of this legacy offering? God, is there any way that you're calling me to invest in it? If you would pray that prayer, that would be amazing. We truly believe God's best is ahead. We truly believe the best is yet to come. And we're believing in faith that God is going to do big things for this next year, 2020. We believe that God is gonna move in our city and together we can see our city experience Jesus and empower the world. We love you. Thanks Adam and welcome to New Anthem Church. My name is Cece and I'm one of the staff members here. We will be having our very first Christmas Eve services on December 24th right here at Mount Clemens High School. There will be three identical services at 1, 2.30, and 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve. We would absolutely love for you to come and bring all your friends and family and make sure you arrive early to get a seat. Also on Christmas Eve, we'll be having a Christmas choir to celebrate Jesus. There have been lots of people that have signed up already, but if you're still interested, there's still time. You can go and sign up at the connection point and you can also get information about our newly released set list and rehearsal times for that. That's everything, church. Again, we're so excited that you're here today. And remember, our vision is simple. Experience Jesus, equip his people, and empower the world. Now let's prepare our hearts to hear a message about how we can leave a legacy. Amen. Can we give Jesus some praise today? Amen. Yes. A couple of you guys are still asleep. That's okay. Hopefully this message will wake us up today. Welcome to New Anthem Church. My name is Pastor John. If you're new, if you're visiting here with us, we want to say from the bottom of our hearts that you are welcome here. Maybe you're even here and uh, you're skeptical of all of this Jesus stuff. That's okay. At one point, all of us were skeptics. And so we say welcome. You're amongst friends and family here. Um, and of course, we not only welcome our guests here in service, but also everyone tuning in online, Facebook Live and YouTube. Can we welcome them as well? Amen. Um, we finished up a series a couple weeks ago called The Infinite Exchange. Some of you were like, thank God I can't handle any more of the book of John. Uh, and so I'll try not to. I'll try to avoid the book of John for at least a few weeks, even though it is one of my favorite books. Um, and uh, we had our morning of worship last week. Was anyone here for that? Just got to celebrate Jesus? Yes. Um, we're a church that loves to worship ferociously. We absolutely love to worship Jesus. Uh, so it was a little bit of a unique service. Maybe that was the first 
first one for you as well. Um, and uh, today, uh, this is kind of a one-off message before we jump into our Christmas series. And today is all about legacy. Ultimately, that's, that's even the title of my message, message today is legacy. We're talking about what does it mean to leave a legacy. And so ultimately, what we're looking at is the Bible's definition, a biblical definition, so we can have a biblical understanding of what it truly le- means to live, leave a legacy in the context of the Word of God and in context of what Jesus said. So we're going to be looking at the words of Jesus today. I, I, I don't know about you, but I define legacy this way, that our ultimately legacy is where your life lives on, where your life lives on. It's the things that we invest our time, our energy, our talents, and even our resources and our money in that is ultimately going to extend and live well past us, okay? So I'm going to be real honest. My, I have a twofold message today. The first part of my message is going to be looking at legacy from a, a conceptual point of view. And then in the last part of my message is actually going to be talking about where we're going as a church, some exciting things that we believe God has uniquely positioned New Anthem Church to be and to do and how you can be a part of it. So I'm, I'm super excited about today. So I, again, I, I define legacy as where your life lives on. What is going to outlive you? Every single one of us are gonna die. Every second that goes by, another person falls down dead. Every, every handful of seconds that goes by, someone dies from unexpected circumstances somewhere in the world, somewhere in the country. And so ultimately, nothing is promised to us. The only sure thing is that at some point, we're all gonna stand before the God of heaven someday And it's important that our life lived here on earth has something to say for it, right? So my youth pastor growing up, I I remember I went to him one time and and he was t- I was talking to him. I'm like, okay, so why am I here? I was at this point of my, my journey of my spiritual walk where I was questioning everything. And I'm like, why am I even here? Why did God even put me here? What is this all about? And, and he, he began to teach me about how really our ultimate purpose and goal, one of the, the main driving forces of our assignment, of our mandate here on earth is ultimately to glorify God through our lives, but to tell people about Jesus, that someday every single one of us, we're going to stand before the God of heaven. And there's going to be two conversations that take place. There's two judgments the Bible talks about. Now, the first one's easy. For those of us that are followers of Jesus today, the first one's easy. It, we're going to come up to a gate and they're going to say, um, hey, do you know Jesus? Yes, I do. Okay, go on in. Okay, so that's going to be the first conversation. The second conversation that is going to take place is going to go like this. Okay, so God's going to ask us, with the things that I gave you, with the life that I gave you, with the resources that I gave you, with the blessings that I gave you, with the church that I gave you, with the people that I put around you, what What did you do for me? What did you do with those things in the context of the gospel so that we could live lives ultimately that reflect Jesus? What did you do with those things? Things now. Uh, some people might think of this. We get, we mix up these or combine these two judgments. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the show The Good Place. It's hilarious. Um, basically, at the end of their life, um, they just kind of measure up all the good they did and all the bad they did, and even if it's like a percentage, one percent more of good that they did than bad, they get to go to the good place. That's not how it works. If, follow, if we're followers of Jesus, we get to <laughs> we get to go to heaven. And how we live in eternity and how we live in eternity with Jesus, the the things that we will be rewarded, the gifts that will be given to us, the crowns that will be given to lay, lovingly lay at the feet of Jesus are ultimately dictated by how we spend our time here on earth. And so um, the the other thing my youth pastor told me, he said, but, and so I'm like, so that's our mission. That is what we're here to do. And he said, no, 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 you have to remember We've been given a mandate to do that by believers, but there's another mandate that we've been given, just like the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden were given a task, we're given a mandate, we're given a job to care for the creation, to care for the garden, to care for and name the animals, but they were also given this mandate to enjoy God and enjoy his creation, enjoy their time with him here on earth. And I believe the same is true for us. And so we have these two mandates, to enjoy God to find freedom in a relationship with Jesus, and also to tell others about him that our lives reflected, could be reflective of our relationship with Jesus. I I wanna give us today kind of our umbrella passage. This is kind of our umbrella concept. Everything we're gonna be talking about today, we need to filter back through this vision. We can't forget this. If we ultimately forget this verse, a lot of the things that I say may offend you. It may tick you off, and here's, most of you guys know my motto, but here's my motto here at New Anthem Church. If I say anything that offends you, remember that I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the person next to you. That's right. 
So here it is, John 10.10. 10. We said this in our series of John. I'm sorry we're going back to the book of John. I couldn't resist. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus is saying this, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Have it more abundantly. So God's underlying uh, uh, purpose, God's underlying vision, we talked about this a few weeks ago, is ultimately from every single, uh, every single command, every single direction, all the things that we read in Scripture, even the things that we don't like, the things that are commanded of us that we don't like, every single one of those are to push us into a deeper life, into a more abundant life, and a deeper connection with God. So even when Jesus is talking about our legacy, what we're doing with our time, even when Jesus is wanna, to wanting to speak to the way that we're handling our money, the way that we're handling our talents, the way that we're handling our, our jobs, the way that we're handling our kids, it's for our greatest joy and to spur us on into more abundant life. And so friends, ultimately what we're talking about today is how do we leave a legacy mindset? How do we leave a legacy mindset? This is what I believe is we're going to discover together. There was a financial expert in Forbes magazine. He was a, he was a financial investor, an expert investor, and he was asked um, some questions. One of the questions he was asked was, um, what are you going to teach your daughter, who I believe was four at the time, what are you going to teach her about investing? What are the most important things you're going to teach her about money, investment, all of these things? And, and uh, the first three things that he said were kind of boring, so I'm not even going to mention those. But the last thing that he said was so fascinating. Here it is. He said this, no amount of luck, discipline, rate of return, or savings will ever matter if one cannot overcome the scarcity mentality. The scarcity mentality. We're going to be talking about what that means. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest culprits to what kind of uh, prevents us, what kind of holds us back and binds us up from stepping forward and having a legacy mindset, having abundant life mindset in our life is a scarcity mentality. So before we dive into our future text in the book of Luke, uh, we're going to kind of talk about what is a scarcity mentality. Number one, we're going to go through these pretty quick. You can write these down. A scarcity mentality believes there is a limit to resources. There is limited resources. That there's only so much out there. There's only, only so much time and opportunities and, and money. And, and so this mindset has a leaning towards being envious, envious of other people, wanting what other people have. This mindset uh, probably gets a little excited, gets a little smirk, gets a little giddy when it sees other people or more successful people, people at a better life stage, go through some hardship or go through some financial hardship. It's this, it's this scarcity mindset. Another attribute of the scarcity mindset, number two, is it uses scarcity language. In other words, it, it thinks on negative scarcity thoughts, right? Negative thoughts. Now, we all have negative thoughts, and thoughts are just thoughts. Some are negative, some are positive. It's what we do with those thoughts. And so are we believing those negative thoughts? Some of us, we've been telling ourselves that there's a certain aspect of life, there's a certain quality of life, there's a certain class of people that we just don't have access to that kind of life. We, we, we have this way of thinking, well, I'm just not the kind of person that gets up early so I could never study to get this kind of uh, degree or to get this kind of education to change my life in this way. Well, I'm not the kind of person that stays up late and works on these kind of things. I'm not the person to take an extra shift. I just wanna try to get as much sleep as possible. So we tell ourselves the things, maybe other people have told uh, us things, or, or maybe we've kind of absorbed things from our childhood, things that we've decided to believe about ourselves, that we're not good enough. Maybe we heard this growing up from a parent, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not talented enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not beautiful enough. We adopt all of these things, and it affects our scarcity mentality. Now, I, growing up, I, many of you guys know my story. Uh, no one, um, I, I grew up in Indian River uh, for the majority of my childhood, and I grew up in a double wide trailer. There was eight of us, plus my so nine of us in this trailer through my childhood and out in the boonies in the middle of nowhere. And listen, nobody told me that I was trailer trash. No one told me that. No one told me that. No, like, even the, 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 the mean kids at school didn't tell me that. No one was, but I believed that. It was a mentality that I adopted. My, my parents didn't tell me this. We didn't, we didn't have a conversations. We didn't have like family meetings about it. Like, so we're trailer trash. Like no one, we didn't have these conversations. And yet I believed that in so much that I would go to school and I would look around and I would see all these kids that they would, they would play golf and they would get pretty much, you know, they'd get like 18 iPhones for Christmas. They would get all of these things. They had these big like four, five, six, 10 story homes in, in Indian River. They would have all these things. And I would, I would look at them and I would say, okay, because of who they are, because 
that's what the class of person they are. I, I was just not created that class of person. I don't have access to those things. I don't have access to those opportunities. I shouldn't look at universities. I should look at community colleges. I shouldn't look at, at these kind of jobs. I should ultimately look at this kind of stuff and trade work, and, and I should look at some of these other things because I, I don't have access to that. I, I wasn't born into that class of person. And so this is, what, this is why, and if you guys know my story, years and years later when I became a youth pastor of a large church and, and I bought my first house and it was awesome, beautiful house and three full bathrooms and multiple bedrooms overlooking the trees. I had this beautiful deck. It was awesome. And, and I absolutely loved it. My first night in the house, I was sitting in my basement and I, was, I had this like theater with like a projector screen and all this stuff. And our first night together, together I'm sitting in the basement and I just start weeping uncontrollably weeping. Why? Because no one had told me, and yet I adopted a scarcity mindset, a negative way of thinking that ultimately led me to believe that there was just certain things, certain lifestyles, certain blessings that I just didn't have access to. And maybe some of you can relate to that this morning. Another aspect of the scarcity mindset is it causes us to hoard and to protect rather than to demonstrate generosity. Right? It causes us to hoard and protect. Why? Because there's only so much out there. There's only so many jobs. There's only so many opportunities. I need to get what's mine. There may not be another chance. And so I'm going to hoard this and kind of keep it to myself instead of experiencing the joy that comes with exercising generosity. And the last one, the last part of the scarcity mindset is it causes us to fall prey to short-term thinking. Right? Instant gratification. Just what we can get quick. The idea with this scarcity mindset is, is, is we begin to view our resources. We get to, when we get to get scared about our resources, we, we tend to use them solely for our pleasure. And now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with pleasure. But ultimately, when we, when we look at this thing, when we look at these pleasures in a negative context, it actually reinforces our scarcity mindset. And here's what I mean by that. This will help. So um, has, did anyone this last week have a bad day? Just a bad day, some point this week. Anybody, show of hands. I'm not going to like start counseling you from the stage. Like, yeah, I, I have my hand up because I did too. Yeah, so, so for those of us that were honest <laughs> um, and raised your hand, maybe you had a bad day this week, maybe sometime in the last couple weeks you had a bad day. Um, there's, there's three different ways that you can handle that. Now, now the, the first one, the first healthy way, I would call this, uh, this uh, being a legacy or abundant life mindset, is to tell someone. You, you talk to your wife about it, you pray about it, you talk to God, you confide in a mentor, you confide in some friends, you, you just, I'm having a bad day, I messed up, I screwed up, I fell into this sin, I fell into this temptation, whatever it was, another, uh, another healthy way uh, that would be exercising an abundant life or legacy mindset is uh, you do some healthy, maybe exercise, something to just kind of detox and kind of unwind or kind of get some perspective, get some alone time, or number three, you could just eat, Right? <laughs> I, I believe that Krispy Kreme was invented for people that were struggling with the scarcity mindset. Amen, church. This is a very true story of something real that happened to me three years ago. Now, most of you guys know food is my love language. And I was driving, my wife and I, we were on our way up uh, for Thanksgiving a couple days ago to uh, Traverse City, and uh, we were on Hull Road, and I was listening to a pastor, and he cracked some joke about Krispy Kreme. And I was like, babe, this is the Holy Spirit speaking. Krispy Kreme is like the next block on Shainer. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is speaking. And she was like, John, stop. You're being ridiculous. Stop it. And I'm like, I'm hearing from the Lord, woman. And so we turned on Shainer. And I saw the beautiful, like, green and, and, and red building. And I'm like, yes, but you have to do the little switchback because all the roads in Macomb are awful. And so we did the little, like, switchback thing. And, and I, we pull in, and I saw that the hot... The hot, fresh sign wasn't on. So God was trying to teach me something. God was trying to teach me something. I'm like, okay, so the hot sign's not on. So we go, we pull up, we pull up to the, uh, we pull up to the building, and all the lights were off, and it was closed. And so I shared, this is like a whole other side message. I don't always hear the voice of God correctly. I really thought, I really thought the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. Um, but ultimately, friends, the writer in this Forbes article 
is concluding this. He concludes this way. He says, if your attitude about giving is wrong, you will never be able to leave a legacy with what you have been given. And so it is critical, it is imperative for us as the church of Jesus Christ to have a legacy mindset, to become legacy-minded people. So we're going to explore today how do we develop, cultivate, foster a legacy mindset, and how can God use that legacy mindset to change the world? And so we're going to be in the book of Luke. Uh, We're going to start in chapter 12. We're going to go through 16 through 21. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me, and let's pray today as we we celebrate God's goodness. God, we thank you for today. We ask you, open the word up to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the gift of worship. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for meeting us here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for invading our hearts. We ask that you just kind of disrupt the service, that you have your way here. God, would you be speaking in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. Luke 12, Verse 16, it says this, and he told them this parable. This is Jesus talking, he's sharing the short story. He says, the ground of a certain rich man yielded an an abundant harvest. He he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And, And then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. Is not rich towards God. This is such an imperative uh, message for us today, an imperative story that Jesus shared. And some of us might be thinking today, "Uh uh-oh, Pastor Johnny switched from the gospel and now he's talking about money. Friends, this message about giving, this message about giving of our time, talents, and treasures is the gospel. Amen. And so let's explore this today. The first mistake in our story that this this, uh, gentleman makes as Jesus is sharing is his perspective. In verse 17, it says this, um, he, he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops, his crops. You see, I think the first perspective that Jesus was wanting to get our attention about was, was this, was this, uh, was the vantage point of this man in our story. Everything was about him, how much he could get, how, how, how much he could kind of hoard. It was all about himself and even calling his crops his own. And so Jesus is first wanting to change his perspective. And, and, and he, I believe if really the, the big picture in this parable is Jesus is saying, it's not about us. It's not about us. This is hard to hear. It got real quiet. There was no amens there. I know. Yeah, I know. I, it stings. None of us like this part of the gospel, but this is in, in the word of God. We can try to make the word of God say what we want it to say, or we can just read it for what it says, and it can transform our life. So um, we, we, it's, it's not about us. So how do we develop a legacy mindset? I have a, a few points that I, I believe are going to help us with it. Number one, we need to give yourself to God. You need to give yourself to to God. Friends, Jesus doesn't ask for your stuff. Jesus doesn't want your stuff. Jesus doesn't want, in the New Testament, speaking in the New Testament, Jesus doesn't want a percentage of your stuff, right? Because by the time the new law is rolling around, Jesus knows as good as anybody that if Jesus gets your heart, when Jesus comes in your life, transforms your life, starts this transforming work, you start living for him. We talked about the, the kind of the God's, uh, God's will crazy cycle last week where we start enjoying God and we celebrating God. We're enjoying the favor. We bring more glory back to him. As we start this cycle with Jesus, Jesus knows that all this stuff will follow. All this giving stuff will follow In other words, I'm saying this, that I believe it's absolutely impossible to be so intimately close to the heart of God and to be a stingy person that hates to give, that hates to serve, that hates to be all in and serve Jesus Christ. I have to do this all the time. When's the last time we asked ourselves, when's the last time we've we've prayed the prayer, God, God, you can have everything. God, take it all. God, I want you to have my, my job. I want you to have my money. I want you to have my resources. And I know you guys have prayed this prayer. I want you to have my kids. Just take them. God, when, when's the last time you've prayed this prayer? I have to do this all the time. This is such a danger for me because otherwise well, I begin to think that things are mine. That things are mine. I have to do this even with New Anthem Church. God, all this is yours. Otherwise I begin to think it's mine. It's not mine. 
This isn't because of me. This isn't because of our, our staff. This is because of Jesus. All of this is because of Jesus. And so I, I always have to try to keep this kingdom perspective of laying it at the feet of Jesus. Like, no, I'm not touching it. God, it's yours. The increase, the good things, the bad things, the frustrating things, the awesome things, the breakthrough, the salvations, the, all the increase, all these ministries that keep popping up, the passion and the people, the beautiful worship, all this stuff, it's because of you. I'm not touching it. It's all you, Jesus. And if I can be real honest with you, every single day that goes by, I become more and more passionate, passionate about this idea that, that it's not about me, especially in the context of church. Believe me, friends, if, if, if God tomorrow was like, you're not the guy, someone else, someone else needs to lead, someone else needs to speak, you're just going to be the worship leader, you're just going to be like the children's director, please, Jesus, no. Like, like if, if God came to me tomorrow, I would gladly do it. Here I am, Lord, send me whatever you want to do. And when I look around at the country and I've seen uh, failure after failure and all these different church leaders and all these great men of God and all these great pastors that have, have, have went into moral failure and started stealing money from the church and embezzling all this stuff, every single week I feel like I hear another story of a mega church, a powerful church that this happened to. Ultimately, I believe it's because that leader took their eyes off of that vision that it's all yours. My hands are off and I'm not touching it. You want to know when we see things going really terrible for the Israelites all throughout the Old Testament, when they get their hands on whatever blessing God gave them, when they start trying to fix it, trying to control things. You see, Jesus is saying all of this because he cares about your investment. He cares about your investment, and he wants you to experience not 90, 80% joy, 100% joy that can only come in stepping out in obedience and giving of your time, your talent, your treasures, laying your life before the God of heaven, saying, here I am, Lord, send me. Do whatever you want. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What would it look like if this church were full of these kind of people? First Corinthians says this in 6.19. It says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This is huge. So, so we don't even belong to us. We don't even belong to us. Every single bit of it is so Jesus. So many, so many people, and maybe you even know people, maybe this has been you at one point in time. I know this is a mentality I've struggled with, that like I'm a self-made man. I've picked myself up from my bootstraps. No, we have to remember that the God of heaven, I was reminded this morning, owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That means every single bit of wealth in all the world, in all the country, in all of history has always been God's, and God gave to it who he, who he wanted to, who he gave which means, uh, and because of God's common grace, it means he gave good things to bad people, bad things to good people, good things to good people, bad things to bad people, because God is an all-knowing God and an all-powerful God who gives abundantly, and he gives favor, and, and, and this is just all part of his plan and all part of his perspective, and we're smack dab in the middle of God working in his plan, in his midst, and so in all of this, in all of this, if God's the giver of good gifts, it means that even the business that we built, even the, the job that we have, the, 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 the promotions that we've received, and we're now a manager or CEO, whatever, whatever, whatever we're, we're at in our life, whatever season maybe God has, has blessed us with, it's all because of him. It's all because of him. And this is what should make it so much more easy when we realize even my body is not my own. Even I don't belong to me. Every single bit of it is, is about Jesus. How much e more easy should it be for us to respond in gratitude and thankfulness to the God of heaven and saying, God, for everything that you've done, we've said it a few weeks ago, the fact that there's breath in my lungs and my heart continues to beat, the miracle that is, I'm responding with my life in gratitude and thankfulness. God, you can do whatever you want with me. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Number two, for us to have a legacy mindset, we need to have a long-term view. We need to have a long-term view. What does that mean? Well, it could mean one, 10, 15, 20 years. I think that's pretty good, but I think Jesus in our narrative today is talking about eternity. I think he's talking about our investment in eternity. Having a kingdom perspective, having that perspective affect everything that we do, even disrupt everything that we do, maybe even cause some momentary inconveniences. I, I remember I was sitting across the table about two years ago now uh, from Adam, who did announcements today. He's one of our youth directors, uh, and uh, he was, he was in Bible college in Grand Rapids, and 
um, I was getting ready to launch a church. I was telling him about it, and I remember I was talking to him, and uh, I said, man, when, when you, were, we were, you were in youth, my youth group and you found Jesus, you were just so excited and passionate, you were just telling everyone. Like, it almost made me nervous because he would just go up to anyone and be like, hey, I need to tell you about Jesus, so uh, this is going to happen. And he would just like, start talking to him about Jesus, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this dude's on fire. And I, I'm like, I'm planting a church, and I, I need people like that, so I guess I'm just wondering... Like, are, do you still have that fire? Do you really? And he just looked, he got real quiet and he just looked across from me and he's like, I'm literally willing to get punched in the face for the gospel. And I was like, you need to plant a church with me. Because this kingdom mentality, it doesn't think about any momentary discomfort, any awkward conversations, because they're thinking solely about the moment that they're going to be standing before the creator of the universe and thinking about what they did with their time here on earth. And sometimes that means being uncomfortable. I know it meant being uncomfortable for my wife and I. Some of you guys know my story. When God called us to launch a church, we were regional directors at a a youth missions organization, this awesome ministry, uh, a couple hours away, and God told us to go. And and not like, you know, so start the process, like, like you're you're gone. We sold our house at this point. We'd already sold our, our house, our, uh, uh, my, my, all my extra guitars, my Apple Watch, like everything. We sold everything. We had like cashed in. The Apple Watch meant a lot to me, Tammy. It just did. But she was like, Apple Watch. It meant a lot to me. Any Christmas gift ideas for you guys? But so, <laughs> sorry. Um, so we, we sold everything. We cashed in. And, and we, we, with no jobs lined up, we just moved back to Metro Detroit. And we saw God do miracle after miracle. Up until about, I think, three months, four months ago, I didn't have a steady paycheck. We were just trusting God, believing God, stepping out in faith. And friends, if we had to go back and do it all over again, we would do it again and again and again because our momentary, uh, our mo- momentary discomfort, us going from a beautiful house into our little tiny apartment that can barely fit us and our dog, we would do it again and again because we're not thinking about the apartment. We're not thinking about the discomfort. We're not thinking about being super tight on our bills. We're thinking about this moment that we're standing before the God of the universe. And so we have a legacy see in a kingdom perspective. We have a long-term view. Friends, we need to have a long-term view that should guide, that should direct, affect every single thing that we do. And number three, number three is we need to be intentional with our resources. We need to be intentional with our resources. When we reach the point where we realize, okay, everything's God, God, it's all yours. You can do whatever you want with them. We need to be really intentional with how we use those, our time, our talents, our abilities, our treasures, right? Second Corinthians says this, we'll finish up with this, and then we'll transition and and talk about um, our our giving opportunity today. In the message version, which I don't normally use, um, but I I absolutely love the wordage. Um, Many of you guys probably know the verse where it says, God loves a cheerful giver. In the message version, it says this, remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. This is so good. This is so good for us. This is ultimately what I want for us, church that we could be givers, that we could be investors of our time, our talents, our treasures into the kingdom of God. We could invest in the next generation. This is what we want for our Anthem kids. This is what we want for our Anthem youth. This is what we want for New Anthem Church, that we would give, but that we would be delighted to give, that it would be out of the joy of our heart. Maybe you went to a church where they, they would like guilt you into it. That's just not who we are. That's not what we're supposed to do. That's not what we're called to do. That's not our mandate from God. We're supposed to give abundantly, give generously because it's the greatest joy of our heart. That's why we always tell you, we never ask you to give. We say, hey, listen, talk to God. This is all we want you to do. Just talk to God. Do whatever he says and give and watch God change the world out of the seed that you sow into his kingdom as you give out of the joy of your heart. And so with every single bit of that, I know this was a bit of a fire hose, a little bit of a different message because it's not really going to be a series. We don't speak on giving often, but we're introducing a couple things today. We're going to be introducing what is called a legacy offering. You can see the blue envelopes on your, 
on your chairs there. This is going to be our, our annual year-end offering. It's not like we're going to be, it's like a once a month, once a month thing. This is a year-end offering. For the next four weeks, we're going to be collecting a special offering that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. I, I, you know, I love what this verse says. Um, that way you will be protected against sob stories and arm twistings. That's not what we're here to do. We're, always, we're a church that celebrates. We're celebrating. We're always just going to give you the facts of who God is and what God's done and how God has blessed us so that we can always just celebrate how good God is. And so we want to give you guys some opportunities. I want to talk to a couple different people. Maybe you're here today and um, you've never experienced the joy of completely investing in what God's doing and, and just regularly giving to a church. Just uh, Some churches call it tithing. Uh, maybe for you it's 10%, maybe it's 4%. Maybe you've never done that today and you just sense that the Holy Spirit is causing it. You know, you, you believe, man, this church is home for me. Uh, maybe you only, you only come like maybe once, twice a month, but this church is home and you want to start regularly uh, investing in what God is doing, um, it, that, that would be absolutely awesome. I, I, I like to just share facts. Like I said, we share facts and we celebrate what God is doing. Um, I've had so many people that have said, um, the, the cool thing about this church is it doesn't feel like a church like just kind of starting up, trying to get it on its feet. Like there's a lot of things that are established. There's a lot of structure in place. It seems really organized and we love that, but you need to know that a lot of that that is actually due to some amazing men and women of God, individuals and powerful churches that invested in this in a big way, gave us a lot of sustainability so we didn't have to <laughs> worship in a complete like dump and not have any lights and good sound and good coffee and all these things. And so they gave us a cushion and sustainability to get on our feet as a church. However, even with what we bring in, even with the growth, growth that we've seen, we're not actually sustainable as a church yet. And so we're, we're, we're not closing the doors because, of course, we have reserves. We have those churches that are building into us. But, of course, our hope is that we could completely be sustaining as a church and not just sustain, not just keep the lights on, but beyond and see God continue to change and transform this community. And so, uh, and so maybe God is calling you to just do that, be a regular giver, attendee. Uh, maybe you're, on, you're already on our dream team. You're already giving of your time uh, and and your talents, and, and God is pushing you to give of your resources as well. And whatever, whatever, you, uh, whatever you feel God is pressing you to give, um, our challenge to you will always be the same. Talk to God and do whatever he says. Um, and some of you, uh, the, the other person I want to talk to today is the person that's already been giving regularly, you've been investing in, in because you have a legacy mindset, you're thinking about eternity. I want to share a couple things uh, that we feel are on the horizon and are upcoming um, that we want to really give towards, towards this legacy offering. Now, um, before I go into the list, I wanted to let you know that 11% of everything that we bring in already goes outside the walls of the church. So this is even beyond that. We are really reaching. And we, in fact, 1% has already went to a church that's launching in January in Monroe, Michigan. Uh, the pastor was here a few weeks ago, Monroe City Church, uh, and we were blessed uh, to give that 1%. And then the other 10% has already been given to 20, over 20 church plants all over the country uh, through our, uh, our association, Association of Related Churches. And so um, that's already happening. We're already change in the world. Amazing things are already happening, and we're so excited about that. Um, but there's an opportunity with this legacy offering. There's some things that um, we're passionate about as a church, passion, passionate to invest in, and uh, we want to tell you about it. So um, the first one is this. Um, even though we're already giving to other church plants, there's, some, uh, there's even more church plants coming to Metro Detroit. We want to invest in those. There's pastors that have come to town because we're only 12 weeks old. We haven't, they haven't even asked us if we're going to invest or give or if we can do anything for them because they're just assuming we can't. And I would love to prove them wrong. I would love to just blow their mind and be like, Aren't you only a few weeks old? How are you able to give this? How are you able to bless us in this way? We believe that, ch that planting churches is God's plan A for changing the world. It is God's plan A. From the beginning of time, it's been his plan A. We want to continue to invest in it and that we're not empire builders. So it's not just about building our thing and launching as many you know, new anthem locations. We'll launch other people's churches. If they're on mission, transforming the, 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 the communities just the same way we are, we're going to get behind it, right? So that's one of the things we want to invest in with this legacy offering. Here's something else our legacy offering is going to go towards, the youth. Now, if you didn't know, we've had three weeks of youth group. Um, we've been, we have been averaging somewhere around 30 kids every single week. Um, last, or two weeks ago, um, Adam shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. 16 kids received Jesus for the first time. Yeah. Last week, we had about 15, I think, new kids come to youth group, and 11 of those new kids received Jesus Christ. 
And when we add that to the number of salvations we've seen here, I believe we're somewhere in the ballpark of 116 salvations in the last 12 weeks as a church. This is crazy. Hopefully that gets you excited. Here's a vision for you. Wouldn't it be great to feed every single one of those kids every single week? Feed them dinner. We, we've, been, we've been so blessed. We had, we had some people come forward and give cash. We've been able to feed them for the last like two or three weeks. It's awesome. And uh, wouldn't it be great just for the next 18 to 20 uh, youth groups uh, for the, to, through the end of the year, wouldn't it be awesome to be able to just make sure they're always fed every single week? By the way, most of them, the majority of the kids that come aren't from this church. They actually are coming off the streets these boys are in the school, having lunch with them, and they're coming off the streets and hearing about Jesus. This is the best news in the universe. We want to invest in them. We, we believe in summer camps. Wouldn't it be great to be able to send every single kid to camp, to not have to do a big ask, like, let's do a penny march, a dime march, and send these kids. Like, wouldn't it be great to just be like, nope, we got it, because we did the legacy offer. We have the money. Every single kid is going to camp, and they're going to find out about Jesus. Most of our college residents had their lives transformed, had found their calling at a summer camp. We believe in them so strongly. Um, the, another thing that we want to continue to do is um, multiply. We want to invest in the church multiplication and development strategy. Um, now, before you think that's like, we're going to build a building. We're not building a building right now. Um, but uh, here, here's, a, here's, a, here's my favorite way of saying it. Wouldn't it be fantastic if this church had a full-time staff member? This church does not have a full-time staff member, if you didn't know, myself included, does not have every single person that works here is part-time, and uh, we would love to continue to spur on the ministry here, continue to be able to hire other people, continue to, to increase the part-time salaries of the staff so they can be singularly focused on their calling and their mission and their vision. I don't know about you, I believe, I truly believe this church deserves a full-time staff member, and um, and so we want to invest in that. Um, if you guys didn't know, um, our live stream actually reaches more people on a Sunday than people come to church here, right? So we, we have two, bet anywhere between two and 300 people tuning in every single Sunday um, and, and tuning in. Um, we have people that watch back on YouTube. We have over 60 hours of view time on YouTube of people going back to watch the sermons. And so this church is having reach beyond just what we see here on a Sunday. There's people all over the community, all over Detroit, and even all over the country that tune in and watch uh, and, are, and are, are finding connection to Jesus. There's several people that have come in the last several weeks that have said, um, you know, I was watching online for like four weeks, never planned on coming. And then I just, there was one message I heard, I just decided to come and now I come every week. That's amazing. That's an amazing testimony. We want to continue to increase the quality of that, and so we'd love part of the legacy offering to go to that as well. Um, you, uh, many of you guys know we invested uh, in this community a few weeks ago when we got to serve, be the hands and feet of Jesus in our community and, uh, and uh, give over 250 meals out. We want to invest in that um, organization, in that ministry next year, as well as partner with Journey Church uh, and Lakeside Church to, uh, Lake Point Church, excuse me, to uh, to partner with other things on that uh, for the homeless in our community. And so we're very passionate about that. We want the legacy offering to go to part of that as well. And, uh, and then the, this is just a fun thing, the last thing that we would love the legacy offering to go to. Um, our team just started writing a uh, original worship EP a couple weeks ago. We're going to start introducing songs here on Sunday morning, and then we uh, hope to take the songs into a studio and record them for it to be really just be a gift of our heart for our city, for the churches in this community, original, original worship songs written for our church and for our city. And, uh, and so th those are just a handful of things that we're dreaming about that we would love this legacy offering to go to as we spur on the gospel. We're not a church that is about money. I know we threw out some numbers. We, I, I don't even know if I said this, like 2,500 people, I believe, since the first day have come through the doors of New Anthem Church. That's amazing. Um, but we're not about just numbers. We're about numbers because every number is a person and every person has a story and every story matters to God. Amen. And so, so that's what we're about. That's what this legacy offering is about. And so, so for every single one of us, uh, my, my, my challenge is twofold. One, if, you, if you're not regularly giving to a church, we would love you to do that. We'd love you to get on board, experience the joy of regularly investing in this vehicle that was created to change the world as we continue to see people saved and, and, and improve our children's ministry. By the way, we're about to launch small groups in January. It's going to be awesome. 
And all of those things take resources. There's so many things that we um, need to do, but it takes leaders, it takes people serving, and it takes resources. And so, um, and so maybe God's called you to do that. We just ask that you talk to him, uh, and again, do whatever he says, uh, be obedient to him. And then with the legacy offering, um, this is for people that, it, it, whether you um, are gonna just start giving uh, regularly and then wanna go above and beyond, if you're already giving, and this is an above and beyond gift. And I wanna be clear about this, because I've talked to about a dozen churches that have done this, that have all said they shot themselves in the foot because they didn't cast the vision right. And so people stopped giving to turn, keep the lights on and started giving to this separate fund that was designated to change the world. So they were able to change the world and then had to shut the lights off. And so um, and so I want to be just really clear with the vision that um, that this is above and beyond our regular giving. Um, we're, we want to dig deep. Uh, and so I, I'm just going to boldly ask that you just, you just pray this prayer. God, how would you have me give big. I want to give a massive faith step, a massive faith gift to see lives transformed, to see people. Isn't this amazing? This is why they, we call it seed giving, because we're going to give and then people's lives are going to be transformed. It, it's not like we're just going to give and then we're going to see a building go up. How boring is that? Maybe that excites you. For me, what excites me is, is what I'm going to have to say for myself when I stand before the, 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 the God of heaven. And, and, and what I'm excited about is to be able to say, man, I was able to invest here here, here, here of my time, my talents. I started serving. I started giving. I started investing. And because of this, I was able to see all these people saved and kids that I didn't even hang out with on a Tuesday night. They got saved and got went to camp and now became pastors and their church leaders and all of this stuff. This is the vision. This is our anthem. This is New Anthem Church. And every single one of us have an opportunity in this year-end giving, this year-end offering to invest in it. And so we're not going to be collecting today, of course, if you want to put it in the connect card box, you can. If you already know what you want to give, you already want to write a check, you know where to give. We never wave anything in front of you, but we're going to be collecting. We're going to be talking about it over the next four weeks, uh, and we would love you to get on board with us. It's going to be awesome. So you have four weeks. Man, just pray about it. Talk to God, and like I said, do whatever he said. We're excited. Friends, the best is yet to come. Do you believe that today, church? Amen. So... So let's stand to our feet for a moment, and uh, if you can't, everyone just take one of those envelopes and just wave them in the air. Let's stand up, wave them in the air. I want to pray over these envelopes, pray over this offering. Maybe you know of someone, maybe you know of someone that, uh, that likes to, to give to these kind of things that have been wanting to invest in youth, they're wanting to invest uh, to see a church develop, um, and maybe, maybe uh, you want to take an extra one to give. You can, please, please do that. There's no, there's no, um, there's no reins on this. We just... We want to be able to have as much resource to be able to bless as many people and change as many lives as possible. So, so let's pray and believe in faith uh, that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly more with our giving today. So Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless the gift, bless the giver. I pray that you would speak loudly to us, God. What are, how are we supposed to invest? How are we supposed to see the world change for you? God, this can be such a touchy, awkward conversation. This can be such a touchy, awkward thing. It's so, it can be so hard to trust you with resources, but we also know our greatest life, our greatest joy, the most abundant life possible is on the other side of our obedience and stepping out in faith, stepping out in even what's uncomfortable so that we can see lives changed. God, we want to build a legacy. We want to invest in something that outlives us, that stands the test of time. And so we're betting on a sure thing, God. We're not betting on a church. We're not betting on people. We're not betting on Pastor John. God, we are betting on you. We're betting on you. We're betting on you, Jesus. We love you. And so God, just multiply this money. We've seen multiple miracles in this church these last 12 weeks. God, I pray that this would be another miracle. We could celebrate how good you are. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. Church, we love you. Thank you so much for choosing New Anthem this morning. We've been praying for you, and here's always uh, what we pray for you. We pray that the Lord blesses you, keeps you, causes his face to shine upon you, and gives you peace. Be blessed today. If you have Connect cards, go ahead and you can drop those on your way out, and we will see you next week. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this message. We hope it was encouraging and impactful for you. We'd love it if you'd stay connected to us on our social media, My New Anthem Church on Instagram and Facebook, and also our website, mynewanthem.church. Now this message was our gift to you, and there's no obligation or any pressure for you to give, but if you are interested in investing in what our church is doing, we'd love for you to give online at mynewanthem.church. 
Hope you have a great rest of your week. We love you and God bless.